Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new. Hi, hello. My name is Loey, and this is not the kind of content I normally make. Um, this honestly seems like it would be something more fitted to live on Ask a Mortician's channel or something like that, but um, I learned about this through a very, very, very personal message that I received from a subscriber who did want me to share this story so we can kind of get together and sort of figure out with all of our brain power how she should best move forward with her situation. However, before we talk about her story, we kind of need to figure out exactly what happened to impact her. If you feel like my mood's kind of low in this video, um, this is, I, I just don't know how to approach subjects like this. I did want to talk about it because it is utterly fascinating that something like this can even happen. I think it's everyone's worst nightmare who's lost a relative. But also, you know, it was a subscriber's message about a paranormal thing and I, I hope that we can get together and help her. Um, but my subscriber, Erica, who is very, very, very sweet, messaged me on Twitter to let me know of something that happened in Sunset Mesa, California. Just kidding, Colorado like one in the morning. <laughs> so there was a funeral home that was used by a lot of people in this particular area called Sunset Mesa Funeral Home. Um, and apparently, you know, people went to it because it was cost effective and they went to it because I mean, it, it's a funeral home, dude. Like, I don't know, I'll put in my two cents at the very end, but just, I can't even begin to imagine what so many people are feeling right now. Um, the FBI conducted an investigation against the owner of this funeral home um, due to the fact that they believed that the cremated bodies that people were being given were not actually the cremated bodies. Um, and it turns out that the owner of this funeral home was selling body parts without permission, was selling whole bodies without permission. There were empty bags of quick concrete in the home, um, dried concrete, and the families of the deceased loved one were being told that was their ashes, when in reality, it was concrete and bits of people that were left over. So people were getting ashes that were concrete, that were mixed up bones and teeth and oh my god, of other people. Like, I just, I can't begin to imagine that. Ashes are such a difficult thing. I have still not opened my dad's ashes and it's been like two years. I can't imagine actually going through the ashes and realizing not only is it not your loved one, but it's like someone else's like teeth and bones and everything that you've received. This funeral home was found guilty of losing years of cremation records, embalming bodies without permission, selling body parts from what I've seen, and losing bodies. Um, I read an account of this man online, his name is Ron Mabry, and he was the one kind of putting everything together for his deceased best friend. His best friend's name was Rex, and when Rex passed away, he was living on social security, so he needed a lower price for his funeral. Um, as a result, they chose to do a partial body donation, which is where, of course, they donate the bodies to science and you know stuff like that um, but instead of doing the partial body donation the woman who ran this funeral home just gave away the whole freaking body I think when his best friend became kind of suspicious of this is that he had a very specific request because he and Rex used to joke and Rex would say I want my ashes and my one glass eye in a jar with a note that said here's looking at you and the glass eye was nowhere to be found. I know, it's really dark and it's really scary and it's really hard and I'm sorry that I just jumped to the point like that but I felt like I just needed to go ahead and tell you guys about what happened. The owner of this funeral home was named Megan Hess. She, along with the other people who worked at this funeral home are still being investigated by the FBI. This investigation could take months. Um, all of the full details are not out yet but from what people understand, there was just a complete disrespect for bodies there. I mean, bodies were literally sold um, without permission. Bodies were involved without permission. Bodies were cremated without permission. Like, people were given concrete instead of cremation and like other people's bodies in place of their loved ones. And it's a really dark and horrifying thing. But there's a very specific point where we come in because I know this is not the kind of stuff I normally talk about. I learned about this when my subscriber Erica shot me a message on Twitter, and I really try to read you guys' messages as often as I can. Um, I love you guys, I love to hear what you have to say to me. A lot of you will send me, you know, scary stories and stuff like that, but when I saw this, I knew it was a lot more than that, and it was something I wanted to bring to you guys because what happened with all of that 
is horrible and terrifying but there is a part of this like i said i'm just gonna tell you guys and then we'll talk together and try to figure out the best course of action for erica moving forward i'm gonna just read you guys her message because i feel like that's gonna be the best way to explain it hey there loey i'm a huge fan and i love you to pieces i literally love you more because of this i felt as though i had no one else to turn to regarding my current issue and i feel like it's something you could shed light on for me to make a long story short, two years ago, we were informed that the funeral home that we had sent both my grandparents to for cremation was under investigation by the FBI, Sunset Mesa Funeral Home, Montrose, Colorado, for the illegal sale of human remains and belongings, replacing the remains of loved ones with quickcrete, which I think is the um, concrete stuff that I had mentioned earlier, and random ashes from actual humans, pieces of metal, buttons, just disgusting. There are over 100 families currently on the victim list, my family being one of them. On June 5th, it was the five year anniversary of my grandmother's passing, and my family finally decided it was time to spread their ashes at this time. We were all under the impression that our grandparents weren't actually in those bags. This was later absolutely confirmed by a bill of sale found by the FBI in the office of the funeral home for both grandparents. She had dismembered them into thirds and sold accordingly. I like reading that. I'm sorry to interject. I can't begin to imagine what it felt like to know that. I decided for sentiment I would take some of my grandmother's ashes and some of my grandfather's ashes and put them in this gorgeous wine bottle I found. My grandma loved wine. So later that evening, after I had gotten home, I decided to sift through this bag of concrete ashes and find out and confirm myself if what I was seeing was actually pebbles and ground rock. To my absolute surprise, after taking a flour sifter and going through the entire bag, I discovered a lot of charred bones, tooth, a button off of the clothes worn when cremated, and wires. My table and I were completely covered in this dust, and I instantly realized I was sitting there covered in my grandparents, or so she thought. I had a complete mental breakdown after finding washing bones and teeth. I was really close with them. This is where this gets scary for me. Two weeks ago, they found the bill of sale confirming that both my grandparents were never cremated, but instead sold to a university in Utah as cadaver bodies. So the question is, who do I have in this wine bottle? I'm starting to feel uneasy because I know these bodies were not treated with respect and that the souls that occupied them are probably enraged with the woman that betrayed so many of us in this small town. How do I respectfully dispose of someone I don't know? What should I do? I'm scared and I don't want a dark energy around my family. And I know it's not my family in there. It feels wrong to have them. I have photos and articles if you're interested in proof. I just need help. Number one, the fact that like somebody would trust me enough to tell me something like that feels incredible and I feel honored to have heard Erica's story and I feel horrible for her. So we messaged back and forth for a while and we were just sort of talking. She was sending me links to all of this stuff where it showed that the woman who ran this funeral home was literally selling bodies as cadavers, was illegally cremating people, was taking ashes of people who she realized she couldn't profit from and literally splitting them up amongst the families. This one just really hit home for me, I guess, because like I told you guys, it's almost been two years since my dad passed away. Way and I still haven't gone through the ashes and I don't know when I ever will because I it's ugh, it's just such a big thing and the fact that she finally did that only to find out that they weren't her grandparents is just horrifying. She let me know pretty quickly that she was feeling a lot of really negative energy and she was feeling very dark and she wanted to get rid of the ashes, but she didn't know how to do it properly to where she felt like she wouldn't stir anything up. I reassured her that at the end of the day, she did not disrespect those bodies. Like nothing would ever hold a grudge against her for anything. Like it's not like she was the one who did all of that awful stuff you know what i mean i think she's just concerned that having the ashes in her possession that something paranormal might follow her um once she disposes of them and she doesn't really know how to do it respectfully so we're talking for a while and i did ask her have you noticed anything to which she replied yes i actually lived in a haunted house that was haunted prior to me before moving in before i realized that it wasn't them in the bottle i felt positive i was radiating positivity but ever since finding out the truth my depression is bad and the energy surrounding the bottle isn't good. I had to take it off of my buffet because I would just stare at it and it felt nasty. That's the only way to describe it. Nasty. And I feel the hatred, not just from my personal experience, but the hatred from the people that she desecrated. The house that I live in currently has always had activity. I started watching your channel about two weeks ago and I've noticed an influx in things. Sorry. But we then continued to talk. I kind of consulted with Haley and I was like, yo girl, like... 
you know a little bit more about this than me like what do you think and Haley just confirmed my thoughts that you know at the end of the day um like nothing would ever hold a grudge against Erica because she did not desecrate the bodies she did not disrespect the bodies it's not like she went through the bodies and sifted through everything like it's not like she disrupted someone's ashes or anything like that it's like she really thought they were her grandparents at this point um and she didn't know you know what I mean when I told her that she of course you know said that you know she was thankful but she still just wasn't sure I asked her if she felt comfortable enough addressing anything and just letting it know how sorry she was for you know their experience and how you know they needed to move on from her because I guess that the thing that Haley had mentioned her only real concern was that the bodies of these people had been with Erica for so long that maybe they had formed an attachment to her and she obviously always treated the ashes with love and respect and everything um and spirits can get attached to that. Erica did say she doesn't exactly feel comfortable or confident in directly addressing anything so I guess now I just want to pass this off to you guys and Erica wanted to pass this off to you guys. What do you think she should do with these ashes? I did ask her if she was sure she wanted to spread them and she was very, very, very sure she wants to discard of the ashes. Now in her saying this, of course, I'm assuming that no one has asked her for the ashes in the case investigation or anything like that. Um, but if this was you guys, what would you do? And I, I really wanted to open this up to all of you and sort of see your own thoughts because I don't know, I just, I, I've never seen anything like this. There was a funeral home in Georgia, actually. I, I say I've never seen anything like this. I've never been personally tied into anything like this the way that I now feel knowing Erica's story, you know what I mean? And I feel like all of you guys are my friends and I wanna be there for you always. And I hope that we can all be there for Erica, but sorry, I got off on a tangent. Um, what I was gonna say is something like this did happen in Georgia. I think that um, actually Ask a Mortician did do a video on it. I don't know. You guys let me know down below what you think. Um, Erica is literally such a sweet person. I'm sending so much love to her family and I'm so sorry to anyone who was affected by this. Um, and if anything further happens in this case, now that I've kind of done a video about it, I will update in the future. I love you guys very, very much. If you did enjoy the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you all and I will see you in my next video. Bye.